Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here, keeping an eye on your weather forecast as we are tracking a major winter storm right now over New Mexico. This is going to bring in moderate to heavy snowfall for portions of the High Plains, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, with severe weather for the Deep South in the next couple of days. Also, if you're new to the YouTube channel and you really like these detailed weather videos that I do create, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So this is for 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the four corners, and we can see the blue on your screen. That indicates we're seeing light to moderate snowfall coverage in that area at this given time on the models. So again, this is 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time if you are in this area. If you're doing any traveling, if you're doing anything outdoors, I would suggest going inside and doing it because the snow is going to be coming down pretty good here for Monday afternoon. But the system is going to be moving into New Mexico by tonight. So right around, say, about 11 to 12, uh, 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., that's where the snow is going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to the southeast. Moderate to heavy snowfall is anticipated. We could also see some thunder snow potentially if there's enough instability in, um, in the upper parts of the atmosphere. So keep that in mind. We may see a chance of thunder snow perhaps with this incoming system for New Mexico. But it's only going to get more significant from here, especially on Tuesday, once this gets into northern Texas. This is right around 9 in the morning Central Standard Time for northern Texas, for western Oklahoma. So if you are in, say, Amarillo, Texas, um, you're going to get hit pretty good here with light to moderate to heavy snowfall at times with some breezy winds that are anticipated. That's because, again, we have all this moisture that is going to be flung on the cold side of the system. And when that happens, we get a lot of snowfall because temperatures on the northern side are below 32 degrees. And that equals what? Snow. Further south, where it's warm enough, where it's above freezing, it's going to be in the form of rain. So, like, say, Houston, Texas, if you are in Corpus Christi, actually, Houston is here, Corpus Christi, Texas, you're going to see rain for much of the storm, or, in fact, for the entire storm. But if you're in Dallas, it's going to start off as rain first, and then transition still over to snow, perhaps. There's kind of that uh, borderline where you might see snow, or you may not see snow. There's a little bit of uncertainty certainty exactly where the snow line actually exactly sets up but if you're to the north like in Oklahoma City you're likely to see snow and again this is for about noon on Tuesday so 12 o'clock for your lunch time it's snowing pretty good and then um, in Missouri central and southern Missouri northern Arkansas this is right around midnight for Central Standard Time, it is going to be snowing very hard. I know a lot of you are sleeping at this time and no one's on the roads, but if you're one of those drivers that is doing any deliveries, like I mean with the 18-wheelers, just keep in mind the snow is going to be coming down pretty good because these blue colors right here are pretty dark, right? They're not light blues where we're seeing light snowfall accumulations. This is going to be some pretty intense snowfall rates of up to about three or four inches an hour. And and also for Oklahoma, for Kansas, it's going to be snowing pretty good still. So some areas start getting the snow like Oklahoma City, like I said, at noon. The snow could continue all the way into about 6 in the morning on Tuesday. So you're looking at a 15-hour period where you might be seeing some snowfall accumulations in the Oklahoma City region. All right, this storm goes into um, the upper Midwest. So like St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Illinois, you're going to be seeing the snow. And it starts there right around say in some areas like St. Louis, Missouri starts there about midnight and it will continue throughout the morning hours. So John 54 2E, you live in St. Louis, Missouri. Please keep that in mind. If you're doing if you're going to work early in the morning, it's gonna be nasty. You're talking about snow, some gusty winds, maybe some white out conditions, perhaps. All right, this is kind of the wet snow that could really make traveling pretty hazardous because temperatures are not gonna be super duper cold. We're not talking about single digits here. So this is gonna be a wet variety snow that's gonna be coming down. Over central and northern um, um, portion there of Indiana and Ohio, you're talking a lot about light 
light to moderate snowfall as you can see here on the blue colors chicago you are going to get the snow it's going to arrive there right around 9 to 10 in the morning on uh on wednesday all right so for your wednesday morning commute it's gonna be pretty dicey on the roadways southeastern iowa as well as southern michigan you're going to be contending with quite a bit of snow out of this system all right so that's a look at wednesday morning let's go into wednesday afternoon here the rest of michigan is going to get hammered like detroit michigan if you are in lansing michigan if you are in uh say uh, western michigan it's going to be coming down pretty good throughout the entire day on wednesday we're also dealing with some strong winds here so maybe some blizzard conditions cannot be ruled out because again the iso bars here are a little tight so we're going to see some breezy uh, type winds with gusts maybe up to about 35 to 40 miles an hour at times but um, especially it's going to be that shield of snow that's going to really be making things pretty tetris on the roadways throughout your uh, morning and afternoon commutes and of course for your afternoon commute right around say about seven o'clock in the evening on your wednesday if you are in say portions of north uh, virginia west virginia here if you're in pennsylvania if you are in the upstate central new york even now looks like perhaps looks like new jersey here now might get the snow we were talking uh yesterday and the day before that how models can change with time this is the nam 12 kilometer though it's not a high or it's not a global model if we wanted to take a look here at the european model it also has trended a little further south so it looks like now northern new jersey could get in on the snow and yeah that is consistent with the latest gfs so this could actually be a much more impactful system now than what we first thought because now again the surface slope could be a little further south so like areas like central and northern new jersey could get hit pretty good here this is some a moderate to heavy snowfall accumulation that could be a problem central pennsylvania maybe even redding pennsylvania erie pennsylvania getting hit pretty good um central new york then of course for vermont new hampshire maine gonna get in on the action we're talking some strong winds um some reduced visibilities here and then of course what the interesting thing is and this could be a little bit of a problem you start off with snow in northern new jersey downtown new york even for southern new york um connecticut as well as um say portions there of rhode island right and even southern and southeastern pennsylvania well look at what we got it turns into rain by a wednesday evening and wednesday night so we could see some enhanced snow melt if there's enough snow that is able to accumulate ahead of time and that could lead to um some slight risk or marginal risk for some flooding in some of these areas so keep that in mind a pretty impactful system to say the least and there's going to be quite a bit of rain the only areas that might not see a lot of snow is like cape cod because you're going to see rain for the majority of the system as that yeah, wow low passes to your north okay so now we're going to be taking a look now at how much snowfall can you expect with this snowstorm this is the latest 12z run from the nam 12 kilometer and we can see um this is the 10 in 1 ratio i was told don't use the um the kichira one because the temperatures are not going to be super duper cold i made a mistake in yesterday's video on that i do apologize and we're going to get and stick to the 10 in 1 ratio instead because this is going to be more of a wet snow that you you're going to be seeing uh, uh anywhere between maybe 10 to 15 inches in some of these areas so like portions of the panhandle of texas central oklahoma you might see as much as say uh, 9 to 12 inches of snowfall northern portion there of arkansas you might see uh say 9 to 12 inches of snow and southern missouri here maybe up to even 14 inches of snow st louis missouri here might see as much as four to eight inches and then central illinois indiana ohio Ohio, southern and central Michigan more like in the ballpark of maybe about four to eight about four to seven inches uh in the majority and then if you are in Pennsylvania New York um same thing more like five to eight inches that is anticipated northern New Jersey in particular like right along this slit here if that actually ends up uh, being the case maybe up to eight or nine inches can be a possibility and of course over uh, central New Hampshire and southern Maine you might see as much as say 9 to even 12 inches of snow so possibly about a foot 
likely with the snowstorm that transits the area. And this is a pretty impactful system, folks. This is to be taken pretty seriously. Also, what needs to be taken seriously is the severe weather. Also, we're going to be looking at the Storm Prediction Center at the very end of this video. So make sure you're watching this portion of the video because the, the, the details that I give you are very important. Because while some of you might think that this is not going to be a big severe weather event, it could end up being that way. But we have significant to extreme amounts of shear that's going to be in place. The kinematics are going to be insanity. And so we could be looking at some... Um, um, some prefrontal supercells right along the Gulf Coast, and they could produce strong long track tornadoes, perhaps. All right, so this is for 10 in the morning. This is our setup. We have low level wind or surface winds out of the southeasterly direction, right out ahead of the front. But the thing is, when we go forward in time, those winds are going to be um, staying pretty strong and they're going to move east. So central Louisiana, um, right around, say, 6 to 7 o'clock at night, you're going to be seeing southeasterly winds 20 to 30 miles an hour. And that goes into, say, portions of Mississippi with southeasterly winds right around about midnight at around 20 to 30 miles an hour. So that's a look at your low level winds. Now let's take a look at the, uh, oh, those were the surface winds. Low level winds now going to be really strong, especially right out ahead of the front here. Uh, me, Ethan, and James Treft, uh, shout out to you guys uh, because you were there in the uh, group uh, in the lobby one on discord when we were talking about this and you all agreed that there's going to be some pretty strong low level winds here these are just going to be out of control anywhere between 55 to 65 knots across central and southern texas so this is going to be where we really got to watch primarily around the uh, houston texas corpus christi texas we could see a few rogue supercells capable of producing long tracked intense tornadoes, large hail, uh, maybe some large hail, but big time damaging winds of at least 60 to 70 miles an hour cannot be ruled out with this. That's for Southern Texas. This goes into Louisiana uh, by Tuesday afternoon. Look at these winds, folks. These are some serious low level winds, anywhere between 55 to 65 knots, getting close to even 70 knots at five thousand feet above the surface why is this important because it tells us what's going on on above the surface if you want tornadoes you want very strong deep layer shear with strong low level winds in in the forecast that's what we have right here and so central and northern portion here actually central and southern louisiana primarily is a big concern here for strong tornadoes and some damaging winds. And you can see right here, look at some of the more enhancement of winds, possibly getting close to 90 knots right out ahead of this front. So big time damaging wind threat here, as well as any uh, discrete or any embedded discrete storms that form within the line will be capable of producing also strong long lived tornadoes as well. Upper level wind pattern here. The reason why for this is because we have a negatively tilted trough. You can see where the trough is. It's slanted in this way. So I'm draw I'm using my mouse here to show you that it's negatively tilted. So when you have that, you get a lot of dynamics in mind with, um, with a lot of directional and speed shear over Eastern Texas, over the Arklatex. And then of course, spreading eastward into Louisiana, Central and Southern Mississippi and Alabama. And I mean, look at these winds anywhere between 85 to almost uh, about 95 knots that is really strong in the uh, narrowest warm sector uh, perimeter space here and again it won't take much just because we, uh, what you're about to see is not very much cape at all I've got told by a lot of people that in this scenario, you may get strong tornadoes, even so you don't get a lot of um, CAPE numbers. And so that's the concern here. We're gonna have a lot of directional and speed shear. The kinematics are there. The thermals don't look too terribly bad. We're missing a few things, but overall this looks pretty concerning. 
All right, so by about 3 to 4 p.m., there's your instability axis right there, right along the coast. Again, some of the MU Cape, which is named for short, most unstable Cape could in fact a little further north here, uh, over and ahead of the warm front. So again, some elevated storms could be capable of producing a few spin-ups as well. But more of the surface space convection, if that's able to materialize right along the coast here, Strong tornadoes are definitely a likely or are definitely expected with this event. All right, so dew points are very high. We're talking low 70s uh, or even upper 70s right along the coast here. So like Houston, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, very high dew points. And then the dew points here in the upper 60s to lower 70s, actually mid to upper 60s, I should say, for southern Louisiana, so like Gonzales, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. If you're in New Orleans, Louisiana, this is for you. This could be a very big deal, big tornado day for you all into the overnight hours of Tuesday and a Wednesday, right along, again, where this cold front is and where this warm front is. That warm sector, really well evident here on the dew points. So that's what we're dealing with as far as severe weather. Again, I emphasize enough, we're talking about the possibility for strong long, long tracked tornadoes because of the pattern that we're seeing for that. All right, so the Storm Prediction Center has issued a now level three out of five. I'm a little surprised by this, but again, I probably missed a few things yesterday that made me not want to go enhanced. But after talking with the severe weather team last night, I think it's best that the Storm Prediction Center made the right call at issuing an enhanced risk for severe weather for Southern Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and even for westernmost Florida and southern Texas right there in orange. This is driven by a 10% significant for tornadoes. So again, significant tornadoes are possible with this or certainly likely with a 5% and a 2% chance of tornadoes surrounding that for the deep south. When we take a look here at our wind, again, you have a 30% non-sig for damaging winds, but that could also get upgraded to a significant in later outlooks. Would not surprise me for Southern Louisiana, Southern Mississippi and Alabama due to the low level winds and kinematics that we're seeing. Now there's a 15% chance of large hail also for Southern Texas. So this is pretty impactful to say the least. As far as Tuesday into Wednesday goes, look out folks, it's gonna be pretty dangerous out there for Wednesday or for Tuesday uh, late morning early afternoon into uh, Wednesday now the good news about this is I am looking to do a live stream on the severe weather event for the deep south for tomorrow um, I'm planning to start that right around probably about 10 or 11 in the morning, maybe noon my time, and I will be streaming for several hours into the evening hours as we track this severe weather event. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, folks, now is your chance to doing so because, again, we're going to be live streaming on this. I have got more weather content coming your way on an everyday basis, so don't miss out on anything. All right, so please subscribe, share this with your family and friends. Let's get this out to as many people as we can. And also leave a comment in the section below and ring the bell notification icon. Make sure you get all notifications every time I do upload a video. It really helps out a lot folks, because that way every time I upload a video, because I am pretty active here on YouTube, that way you can get an update every day. You can get notifications on your smartphone. Like, hey, David uploaded. So make sure you have all notifications turned on because this is pretty serious. We're dealing with a pretty intense winter storm um, for tomorrow into Wednesday and Thursday for much of the central Great Lakes and Northeast region of the United States with severe weather. But that's going to sum it up for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Um, I will be back with you more tomorrow with a live stream on this severe weather event.